types of fish. So you've been to the local pet store, and you've noticed that they keep their fish divided into several sections. Why do they do this, you wonder? We'll take you through the basics of what these fish are, and why they are not kept together in the same tanks. First of all, for our basic purposes, there are four categories of fish. Without getting too technical or using the actual scientific names, beginners would be wise to think the four fish groups as marine or saltwater fish, goldfish, community fish, or cichlids. We'll go through each group and give you an outline of what you can expect for each type of group. The marine group are obviously the most beautiful of the bunch, brightly colored, and sometimes bizarrely shaped. Saltwater fish are almost everyone's favorite. Despite this though, we absolutely do not recommend them to be the first time fish owner. Marine fish have very specialized water needs, and if the Aquarius is also interested in corals and anemones, that generally go along with marine tanks, and especially in expensive lighting, and chemicals will also be required. Our advice is you start out with a freshwater tank, and learn your way around the basics of the hobby before attempting a more complex and expensive marine tank. The next group we'll examine is the easiest group of fish to keep, the goldfish. These go fish can tolerate a wide range of temperatures and water conditions. Indeed, these fish will not even need to require a heater for your tank, unless your house is unusually cold. In addition, these fish are extremely good neighbors, almost showing zero aggression towards one another. What's their downside, you ask? Well, they produce a huge amount of waste. In fact, they produce so much waste that the ammonia, ammonia produced will actually kill other fish that are kept in the tank with them, unless your tank is either quite large or you're doing frequent water changes. Your best bet, though, is not to mix goldfish with anything else. The next easiest group of fish to keep in the community fish is mollies, barbs, teras, danos, corderais, live bearers, and loaches. All are widely available and types of common fish. Most of these fish stay small and show little aggression towards one another. Many of them tend to school and present quite an impressive sight in a home aquarium. They are cheap and easy and are the first choice for most beginners. On the downside, you will have a heater in your tank, as these are warm water fish required fairly constant temperature. Also, many aquarists feel that the community fish doesn't seem to have as much personality. The fact that they do so remain so small and have placid temperaments may not appeal to you. This brings us to the most challenging freshwater fish, the cichlids. While many of these warm water fish are beautiful coloration that revival even the marine fish, they are generally bad tempered, tempered and aggressive towards one another. Not to mention deadly towards non-cichlids in the tank, especially if they are spawning. And in truth, the main reason why they are so popular, cichlids interact with one another and their keeper in a way that most fish do not. Adult cichlids are generally very territorial, tending to claim areas within the tank. Every cichlid tank has a pecking order, and each fish within the tank knows his or her place within that order within smaller, weaker fish fleeing from bigger fish. And while this generally provides the fish owner with hours of amusement, it requires the hobbyist to monitor the tank for signs of cichlids normal aggression leading to the fish actually killing one another. All long time cichlid owners will tell you tales of having to get rid of fish because they became too violent or unmanageable. It goes with the territory of owning cichlids. Whatever type of fish you choose to purchase, you should do your reading on that fish before you buy them. Never wait till you brought them home brought home your new fish to do your research. Find out how cho your chosen fish will behave and how big it's going to get, and whether what water it's going to need and food requirements before you bring it home. You and your fish will both be happier if you do this.